Welcome to Malbash Media, everyone. I am your host, Ashley, and today we have a talented guest artist, Ryan Sims, with us. And um, we have, are excited to have him on our first launch for a real live show on Malbash Media. Uh, Ryan, how cool is it to be here today? We're excited to have you. Sweet. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, Ryan's super talented, and we're going to be bu- jumping into uh, some of his work, and he's going to talk and share a whole bunch of it. So if you guys um, would like to, please uh, add some comments and also send us messages. If you'd like us to ask some questions for Ryan on any of our social media pages, make sure you follow us so that we can get those messages and ask Ryan at the end of the show. So that uh, you can kind of connect that, create, create that personal connection with him as well. Uh, we created Malabash Media to spotlight artists and professionals in the business. And um, we are, you know, race, right now launching on uh, not only Malabash.com, which is a platform that houses all types of media professionals. And right now we're the go-to, we're working towards more of the go-to for companies that are hiring for all their company um, commercials and film advertising needs. So definitely check us out on malbash.com. If you're not able to listen to the whole live with us, we will be reposting this onto our websites on articles and videos, and then also onto our YouTube page. So check us out there because we are live currently on LinkedIn and YouTube. So let's dive into the good stuff here and talk to Ryan. He is a cosplay and fashion photographer, CGI extraordinaire i mean uh what should we say like superhero type person real life superhero sure we'll, <laughs> so, we'll go with that um, we'll go with that. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, was about that. I was like you know what? he's a real life superhero this is good. <laughs> <laughs> um so ryan tell us a little bit about about you where you are and how you got to where you're at currently just give us a little oh, deal man um i always debate like how far back do i go for this story it's like well you know we start at birth and uh my mother's birth, <laughs> we, we go from there uh, so i'm originally um let me turn my volume down i think i might have had a little bit of a there you go um i uh i'm originally from laurel mississippi um born and raised there uh brother and i real super nerdy we're still super nerdy so i can't you know <laughs> can't escape it Cool yeah, well, you know, it's cool to be a nerd now, right? Yeah. Um, so grew up with comics and, and movies and games and everything. And uh, and obviously that that carried over quite well into adulthood. adulthood. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I um, oh gosh, wait, I'm trying to figure out like, how do I get here? I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, my wife and I both uh, love music. So we mo- initially moved here for music. Um, I went to school for digital entertainment and game design, which kind of introduced me to Photoshop, which is where I, you know, fell in love with Photoshop. Uh, and then I started getting several photography jobs from there. Um, so it's like, you know, wanted to learn photography to help Photoshop and Photoshop was helping the photography. And so they worked well together. And then, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. at some point I just kind of was like, all right, what kind of stuff does Ryan want to do? <laughs> and, and this leads back to the childhood, <laughs> you know, and doing all the, the fun superhero stuff. And uh, and so, yeah, yeah, I mean, to make a really long story incredibly short, uh, that's kind of me in a nutshell. <laughs> no, I, I love that. That's fantastic. And I know you talked about, like, getting started in doing that portrait photography, and that kind of helps to grow you up into doing the co- uh, cosplay and everything. And by the way, if anybody knows how to get ryan a sponsorship by adobe for photoshop <laughs> anything let him know because he's really great and uh, totally deserves that and we're gonna see some of his work here really soon That'd be awesome. but um yeah if you guys uh to find ryan ryan you're gonna want to go on to ryan sims photography.com or you can find him on uh, ryan sims at on in, uh, instagram yep. and <laughs> kinds of places YouTube that and, you can yeah, classes stuff. and stuff. So I would highly recommend that you can uh, follow, follow, find him and um, watch his work because he's really fantastic. So I found Ryan on Instagram and absolutely couldn't believe that this was created by you. I was just like, this is just somebody who's like taking, if you think of like a Marvel poster <laughs> from some sort of uh, Cinemax theater, this is his work. And I was thinking, oh, this is somebody copying and pasting. 
you know, stuff that they've taken. But no, this is legit. And um, you guys should definitely check it out. But Ryan, you get to share some of that with us. And I want you to talk about some of your favorite um, pieces, some of your favorite things to work on. How long does it take you to work on a project? I know we talked about this a little bit. I know the audience would be really cool for <laughs> them to find out, you know, your processes to all of it, because this to me looks like it should take a couple, like a week. <laughs> yeah. But you know, how long does it take you to to create a masterpiece? And what do you like to do more? I know we talked about like fashion and your portrait. You have lovely family that you've done things with. So what what do you enjoy focusing on the most? Oh gosh, so many questions there. Uh, <laughs> let's we'll, we'll work yeah in reverse. We'll start with your uh, last. Uh, you know, I I guess it really just depends. I mean, you know, people ask me what's like the favorite thing you've ever done. I'm like, I probably haven't done it yet. You know, <laughs> it's like, the yeah, next yeah. thing. The next thing. That's my favorite one. Um, you know, there are times where I feel like I work on things that are like intricately detailed, and and to me they're really cool, but just because of the amount of detail that goes into them. But I tell people all the time, and it was something that I grew up with, the mentality of less is more. And so, like, I I really enjoy just portrait work that's just simple, you know, visually stunning. And there's not really a whole lot of intricate detail. It's just simple, but it's beautiful, you know. Um, and so uh, I can't – I don't really have a favorite. It depends on what mood I'm in that day, I guess. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but I, I definitely resonate very strongly with the less is more mentality because a lot of times people try to make their composites super super busy and, and they can look epic and amazing and uh, and i'm all for that but sometimes you know um you know the very simple com- you know or the most compelling um yeah. or eye-catching uh so i guess i'll share my screen real quick so you can uh kind of see what i see i'm just um i'm uh, screen sharing my instagram account right now just simply because it is basically the biggest port body of portfolio work that I've got out there. It's just everything that's on Instagram. And so, um, and I love this because I, what you're saying is less is more, I lo- you know, I've done modeling. And so you capture just some of the best poses and your lighting's so on point. I've seen some photographers just butcher even the prettiest. <laughs> person. So this is just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I, I brought it up and I've, I mean, I've scrolled a lot to get here, but uh, I, I bring this one up a lot just because uh, there was a lot of planning involved in it. Uh, obviously, this was, um, gosh, was it like, no, it was this year, this year. What is time anymore? Um, uh, this was March, March of this year, uh, but we had planned it well into the uh, previous year because we had shot it um, in December. Um of 2020 but you know all the we planned for months before that because we knew that the snyder cut was coming out and so we wanted to kind of do something that was paying homage to that and uh and all these guys are all super talented like made custom made their suits and they're all like cinematic quality and just like super awesome people um and uh you know they did the black and white version so you got tim and kinsey and mark um and that's tim again as the flash um, and then we have, uh, oh man, he was new to me. I forgot his name. <laughs> uh, cause I'd met him that day. Um, but, uh, well, it's somewhere in the comments. Uh, but we actually, I had to like CGI parts of his body. So that was new to me because, you know, I haven't, you know, I was new to CGI at that point. Um, and then of How course. How long have you been doing the CGI part of it? The CGI part. Uh, so literally this year, um, I, I took a course, uh, with pro edu. Uh, my friend Dustin Volkema, he was the instructor for it, and that was like in January. And so, really, it was it was this year when I kind of like dove. It was a six week course, so we like dove headfirst into yeah. the CGI realm, and uh, it's just been like. I mean, you're you're yeah, you're way ahead of the game. <laughs> I, I, this is top notch work. I mean, seriously. But uh, but it was and- cool because it it did catch the attention of Zack Snyder himself, and he he yeah. shared it. Uh, on his Instagram account, and and that was really really cool for us as fans who were wanting to pay homage to, you know, this awesome, uh, you know, his awesome version of the movie. <laughs> uh, that uh, and, and just all the planning. So it was nice because there was a lot of planning and work that came together to kind of make it come together, <laughs> come together. <laughs> and, um, I love it. And, uh, and and so that's why it's memorable for me. And plus, I've just become such good friends with all these people. 
Um, and so that's one that kind of sticks out in my mind just because of the amount of time and planning and detail that kind of went into it. Well, these guys are so lucky too. I'm slightly jealous <laughs> because they're, they have these huge fit like photos for their portfolio. I mean, like they can just, you know, say, Oh yeah, this is me and this is me and show it off to all their friends too. So I think mean, that's <laughs> some really great bragging rights. And I just love too, how you, you can do the dark and you can do the light. You can do really ex exquisite <laughs> detail. And then you can also do like really great simplistic. It's not simplistic though. It's just got some great depth. And like I said, the lighting and everything. Um, where do you shoot most of these at? Um, oh, here, here's another good example yeah. of, of less is more. Like just, I love just shots like that. There's no compot, no Photoshop. It was just simple, you know. Um, so that whole photo shoot, just that specific photo shoot was actually just done in, um, so this is Mark, uh, and this was all done in Mark's living room. So like, it wasn't any like high end studio or any place, like it was in his living room. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about, you know, Photoshop is that you can kind of do anything anywhere. Um, I've, I've done a lot of work, um, at studio 615 in Nashville. Um, you know, I've, I've gone to locations, I've gone to cons and shot, but like, really, if you look, and this is primarily the Photoshop work, um, probably the majority of all the things I've ever shot have been shot in my tiny one car garage at my house. And so, God, that's awesome. um, so that's, again, the beauty of Photoshop is that you can kind of be anywhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think something with COVID that's helped kind of almost get very creative is realizing that, you know, sometimes you can make little things <laughs> just work just as well as, you know, the big studios and all the extra fluff, you know, sure. and <laughs> that's, that's definitely the case here. But I just, you know, I love, how do you get the inspiration for a shoot? I know obviously you have your jobs you have to do, but like for fun shoes, where do you get that inspiration? Sure. You know, like oh man, uh, everywhere. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> honestly, uh, I know I've got my computer up, so I'll just show you. Uh, I mean, I just, um, I get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest. So I'll create like mood boards and, yep. uh, and just gather a lot of different inspiration. So if I drag this over here real quick and kind of pull up, you can see, I've got like boards for days, um, oh, you know, man. like, uh, fantasy art, you know, uh, and you click yeah. into fantasy art and you've got like a bunch of different cool, mystical fantasy, you know, powers, all this kind of cool stuff. And. Uh, and then I just look at the lighting. I'm just like, ooh, this is a cool dramatic mood. But then this one's really yeah. vibrant and colorful. And um, it depends on the project, honestly. Like, for example, like when we did the whole Justice League thing or did the whole um, – we did like an X-Men shoot and all kinds of other stuff. But, like, I created a whole board specifically for them. And uh, for that kind of stuff, it was like a lot of inspiration was from comics and from e – even from, like, from fan-drawn art, you know, um, you, you get a lot of ideas for cool poses, you get a lot of cool poses, uh, cool ideas for, for lighting, composition, yeah. all the colors and color schemes. Um, so it's really, I mean, to make something, I, I guess it's not really complicated. Uh, it's just the fact that I just, we just grab as many things like that looks cool and that looks cool and that let's put it all together and then let's try to execute yeah. what we think will be the best for this specific type of shot. And then we'll move from there. Um. But, right. uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's ultimately what we do is that we, we gather inspiration from, from movies, from games, from comics, all, all the things I was yeah. talking about at the beginning, you know, <laughs> kind of loops back around. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I love that. I'm not the only one that has like tons of hundreds of pictures on my Pinterest board. Yeah. I think we all go to Pinterest. I mean, I understand, you know, that, um, free advertisement Pinterest, yeah. but you know, I, I think we all understand that creative side where you just kind of need to go and say hey that's cool that's a cool idea and then that's the cool part about it is that you're talented enough to bring that all together and create some fantastic you know, <laughs> artwork I appreciate so it. that's really cool yeah where is your dream with this like where do you want to go oh man i mean where what how far how much farther do you want to go with this how much farther um uh, how far can we go in in, yeah. in a good way you know um yeah i mean i would absolutely love to you know do stuff with with Adobe and, and Photoshop. I would love to do. I would love to do stuff with like Marvel <laughs> in, in DC. That'd be great. Um, but you know, honestly, I mean, even if I were to stay where I'm at doing what I'm doing right now, I'd be content with that. Just because 
you get to form relationships with these people. Um, they're your clients. Yes. But I mean, they kind of become your friends a little bit, you know, and, and it's, you know, I, I love meeting new people. I love getting to know them, getting to know their story, how they ended up where they are. Um, and, and if all it was, was just getting to be, make new friends and create cool content, uh, with them, uh, I'd be content with that. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and I really think, I mean, you do classes, right? That's I do. done some classes. But I think that you should, you know, continue that because I, I think people just absolutely love, I know you do some lives where people can kind of watch yeah, you yeah. doing stuff, which is, is really fun. I kind of popped in on one of those, not the, <laughs> uh, the day, and I was like, wow, that's really cool to kind of see it in real time because you're just like so fast at it. And I'm trying to figure out if you speed it up or if that's just you, how fast you are at it. Well, I mean, but, you know, if it's live, then it's, that's it's live, it is, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, wow, it's moving really fast. So that's really cool. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, when you kind of get in the habit of like, I guess you could say, well, I don't know. I mean, I was telling you the other day that, you know, the, the first cosplay shoot I really ever kind of did was like in 2017, but I've been doing photography and Photoshop for longer than that. So when you've done it for like 10, 15 years, almost every single day, it kind of becomes, you, you pick up a flow to it, you know, <laughs> you, you should be getting fast. If you're not, then you might be doing something wrong, but, but it takes time, you know, it definitely takes a lot of time and, and practice for sure. Yeah, no, it, it absolutely does. What was one of your favorites? Well, what's another one of your favorite projects? I think you showed us one of them, but what was one of like, I don't know, one of your first really big group projects that you did yeah, that you yeah. just, really loved and let's see kind of so so the first oh gosh so the first one i ever did was like um i photographed my best friend as uh, as harry potter <laughs> that was the first one that's awesome i photographed my my uh my best friend as harry potter um and that turned out really really cool um but i always talk about this one just because it was like the first big project before I kind of got into cosplay, I guess. And, and I, I was never really looking to get into cosplay. It just kind of ended up being a great outlet for me to kind of get this creativity out, you know, yeah. um, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll share my screen again. Uh, yeah. So this was just a, a, a recreation. Like we, we weren't trying to do anything new or fancy. We we're just trying to recreate um, the Gotham uh, oh, thing nice. from um, season one of, of the TV show Gotham. And so, um, I live in Smyrna, which is right by Nashville. And so you can see this is the city of Nashville, which is the what we call the Batman building because it's got the little, you know, yeah. here, uh, it's the AT&T building, but everyone calls it the Batman building. Um, oh, nice. And so uh, I was like, we'll call it Nashville. I'm like, wait, no, that's a show too. So I can't, we'll just call it that's Batman. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it was fun because I just called on a bunch of different people. This is my father-in-law. This is my wife. This is me. Uh, this is my mother-in-law. Uh, this was a friend from church, photographer friend. That's my best friend that I photographed as um, Harry Potter, you know, before all this. Um, nice. Another photographer friend, someone from church, another photographer friend, a model. So, like, it was all people that I knew that I just called and was just like, hey, I just want to do something fun. Um, yeah. Let's just see where it goes. And um, and this honestly kind of gave me the idea for the the series I have on YouTube that I'm, I'm wanting to keep going with is uh, the From Raw to Real, which is where we kind of look at uh, and analyze like TV show posters, um, movie posters, how they, how, like, how did they light this? How, how is it lit? How did they Photoshop it? So it's kind of taking an image from the studio or from camera raw and making it into a real image. So like, that's why I was like from raw to real. So, um, yeah. and so that kind of sparked the idea for, for that. So that was one of the first ones, which led to, uh, this photo shoot, um, this isn't the actual, well, th they used it as a promo for a, a Photoshop plugin. Um, but, um, this image with, um, uh, Batman and Wonder Woman, they actually live in Murfreesboro, which is like 15 minutes away from me. Uh, and so they had a really cool Batman and Wonder Woman suit. And I was just like, Hey, come on over. Let's, let's just do a fun, let's just, you know, I'm not going to charge you. Let's just do this for free. And so, and, and then it ended up being really, really cool. Uh, but this was this couple, um, Adam, it's funny, Adam, like Adam West, <laughs> and then Shannon Prince, uh, like Diana Prince. <laughs> That's their real name, you know, like Adam and Shannon Prince. Um, and uh, so they were the first cosplay couple that I photographed. And then from there, it just kind of, in the best way, spiraled out of control to where like, hey, photograph me as this character. And yeah. 
Um, and so it, they're memorable to me because they were like the first cosplay the couple first. I really ever photographed. So. That's cool. And all that stuff, was that theirs that they just brought over with them? Or yeah. where do you guys get most of the equipment from? Yeah, like, well, um, so I don't know, like, if they... Uh, I think I think this suit, the Batman suit, was probably bought from Reeves Effects. I think he, he's actually really big, predominant, um, like yeah. kind of in that film. But he does like a lot of Batman suits and stuff uh, out yeah, in yeah, yeah. L.A. I think, and yeah. um, I don't know where she got hers, but yeah, they. Uh, so a lot of times, either people create their own or they piece it together through different companies and kind of you know form it together. But a lot yeah. of time and effort and money goes into all of it. Regardless. Oh, absolutely. Well, I know the cosplay stuff can be really expensive, you know, especially if you pay for the really good quality stuff and then adding everything in there and the software to edit it and all, you know, lighting and things like that. Now for lighting, I, I wanted to get back to this question for you. How did you learn about lighting? Like, where did you learn how to do it? Was it something that just kind of natural to you? Because obviously you have a very natural eye for lighting. But some people study this. I mean, it's, you know, a huge part of filmmaking and photography sure lighting world yeah yeah so besides you know knowing that golden hour is you know between this time and this time how did you learn depending on the year you know or like what time of year it is yeah um actually i got a photo shoot after this and i was just like what time is sunset and it's like around 4 30 which normally it's like you know around the six or seven you know Um, but no that's a great question uh you know so i like i was saying when i got into school and i started learning photoshop like my first gigs first job ever in photography was like at portrait innovations. And I didn't, it was really very much a a point and click type of job. Um, So I didn't really learn a whole lot there as far as how to become like a better photographer because I didn't understand camera settings. I didn't understand lighting. It was all kind of preset for you. So it was kind of, kind of felt like cheating almost. It's like, you just go, it's like, you just make sure that you capture the moment. It's like the, all this (laughs) will do the rest. Um, But then I worked at a, like a senior photography uh, studio and I worked at two of them, but uh, the second one was like a family owned. Um, uh, so, well, I guess I'll just try to get into details here. So I used to work for like Life Touch, which is like a high school uh, or they call it prestige portraits now, I guess. Um, okay. and, and that's where I kind of got my feet wet as far as like getting, uh, I've got this picture up, just kind of show like a studio setting with light. <laughs> um, yeah. Getting used to like uh, palsy buff lights and, Okay. Um, how to use strobes and, and, and the transmitter receiver, how to like wirelessly, you know, sync that to your camera and, um, yeah, yeah, okay. and then camera settings, F-stop, shutter speed, ISO, tr- learning like, what is that? And what does that mean? Um, so that's kind of where I got my feet wet. But then I worked at a family owned senior photography studio where like, I really had the freedom to explore and to like do, just have fun. And, and I actually live like right across the street from it. So like, and I had become really good friends with the owner and he was just like, yeah, it's like anytime you want to just come over and like, you know, um, he was like, you know, use like, you, you can photograph your wife or photograph who, you know, just like, as long you just, if you need to practice or whatever, go for it. And so he had everything, he had all the lights, all the camera gear, all the color gels, just all that. So, so I really got to have, play around and have the freedom to, to learn and to grow. Um, yeah. And that was a great learning experience because that's really where I've, got very involved in, in portrait photography and understood lighting and like, you know, Rembrandt lighting and uh, like butterfly lighting and, you know, everything from dramatic to like, what is a main light and a field light? What are their purposes and rim lights and hair lights and all this stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, um, and, and it very much kind of looked like this. You'd have like a background and you'd have like your main light, your field light or, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah. And so that's really where I kind of got to explore and learn those things. And of course, all the while, like learning Photoshop as I'm doing all this stuff and trying to implement what I've learned with what I've learned. (laughs) And and, and so, yeah, that, that's really kind of where uh, I I got to really grow um, is working at that job. And and it was really, really cool because uh, my boss was very, very supportive of of that and uh, very encouraging. And so, um, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. It sounds like, you know, a whole bunch of lighting. I mean, some of that stuff, right? right? <laughs> I don't even understand what a butterfly light is. Um, so, <laughs> but um, do you, uh, like, do you, is this part of your classes that you teach too? Do you go into a little bit of the lighting or is it mostly just on the uh, 
CGI. Sure. Side. Yeah. Um, so we do talk about it a little bit. So let's see how many moons I have to scroll up to. Black. <laughs> um, so, so the course, the digital workshop that I actually have at the moment primarily deals with like kind of all the crazy Photoshop compositing, all that stuff. However, we do kind of hit all the main points in it. Um, I have thought seriously about kind of breaking down and just doing like a more uh, simple version of like just lighting and, mm -hmm. and not diving into all the different categories yeah. and, and not diving into all the different categories. Overwhelming. Of course, I'm scrolling far um, because that, I can understand where that gets so far um, because that I can understand where that gets so far um, because that I can understand where that gets so far um, because that I can understand where that gets so far. here it is. Yeah. Do this. I'm like, where is my stuff? Um, yeah. But to do this, I'm like, where is my stuff? Um, but to do this, I'm like, where is my stuff? Um, but to do this, I'm like, where is my stuff? Um, but to do this, I'm like, where is my stuff? Um, but to, uh, hopefully the volume's not turned up a whole lot because and then the type of lighting that's primarily used in like movie posters, that's kind of what we more along the lines of what we dive into, you know, um, kind of like that three point or more uh, lighting where there's at least three lights or more involved. Um, Got it. But yeah, it talks about lighting, retouching, dodging and burning, adding atmosphere to your image, extracting your subject. Um, you know, how do yes. we, uh, you know, make sure our perspective and size and, horizon line match up to where it looks somewhat believable and all that. So, so that's what we go into in the digital workshop. But yes, I have to, to say all that to say that, uh, yes, I definitely have thought about doing one that was just more portrait photography based. And so um, I don't know when I'm going to do that, but it has been in the back of my mind for a long time. So uh, normally when it's there for a long time, it means it's probably coming soon. <laughs> so. No, that's great. And I, this is, this sounds like a really great opportunity workshop too, because I mean, just to have all that detail kind of from start to finish where you, it looks like you, you start the concept, you know, storyboard oh, yeah. sec part, and then you move all the way through the setup where it's at the lighting, the background and everything else, which is what is the best way to learn because you can see the whole process. It's not just Yeah, I mean, I, in this, we definitely, it's just like 10 plus we are hours setting up of, of You get to see the um, whole piece probably could have been a lot more. And it's just a really um, but, good um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot of content. So I definitely think that the information is there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, of course, once sure. we talk about yeah. those different things, there's like three full-length tutorials on those three images. So literally, we are going from... From raw to real, yeah. from camera raw to making our final image a reality and just kind of talking about all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 a lot of information. Like, it definitely takes patience because you were saying before, like, how long does mm -hmm. it normally take? It totally depends on the concept. Yeah. I've gone through some that only took like an hour. Um, and then there are others that take four hours or eight hours. Some of them take like two or more days because they might involve more people to cut out or uh, you have to like, if I'm rendering something in CGI, you have to let it render and it might have to render overnight so you can come back to it the next day and then start implementing it into Photoshop. And so that it's completely, there's, there's no clear answer to that. It can, it's always based off of right. the concept and how much is involved. Yeah, a lot of people go through like entire photo shoots in that amount of time, or maybe Still, more than I mean, hour to eight you know. Hours. Well, I mean, if it's not like really Photoshop fast, based, like, like if it's just <laughs> like you know, um, like a like a a family shoot or something like that, and it's just you know, um, or at least I've known people to kind of quickly, you know, it's room, like you do your settings for one in Lightroom and it's like apply all, <laughs> and, and then it's like oh, that's we're pretty much done now, um, and then it's like oh, I spent all day on one image. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. a little bit more it, it is. It, it can know, be frustrating. You're just like, what did you do today? I'm like, I you got a little edited bit one image. That's your, all I did. <laughs> but it, you were right. But there's a lot more involved for sure. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. 
Exactly. Well, a lot of levels too. I mean, if you're doing it in Photoshop, I don't know how oh, yeah, it necessarily works, but we, we you dive know, deep so into the rabbit levels hole. too. And I'm yeah. sure most of your pictures have a whole ton of levels and a bunch of different depth to it. What do you find helpful to, I'm, I'm sure you're always learning because it seems like you're just growing and hungry for more. What, what is your, where, where do you like to learn from? Where are some of the best places that you have sure. taken classes from online? And I know you, you know, learned all that wonderful lighting and the portrait yeah, and, and everything from the studio like and YouTube something that was and, there. And Google but, were, were my teachers I mean, and still are my teachers to this day. Have you done anything else? Uh, I mean, good YouTube, teachers. I don't know. Um, like, what you- I will say that, you know, every now and then, at least for me, uh, and it normally happens around like this time of year, like when things start to slow down the end of the year, where um, you kind of look back and it's kind of like this, <laughs> the post-mortem of the year. So it's like, you know, what what all did I do? What all did I accomplish? And do you feel like you're stuck in a rut and like you, you're you like, you've plateaued. It's like you, you're here, but you want to get here. And like, how do you do that? Um, and I felt that way. I still, I get there all the time. Um, you know, it's like, and it's funny because I, I look at other artists who I feel like are light years beyond me and they feel the same way. It's like they, everyone's kind of their own worst critic. You look at them like, oh, but your work's so good. And they're like, but your work's so good. And you just kind of fan out over each other. <clears throat> right. Um, but no, I, I have, in my experience, always the felt like I exist, right? was like able to kind of surpass done. that plateau when I found another photographer that was either doing what I was doing or, you know, uh, you know, was just light years beyond me um, or maybe just had the experience or like the awards to back it up. Um, and, and I, and in all seriousness, like I, I took their class. Like I remember there's a, there's a photographer from Finland. Mm-hmm. His name is uh, Antti Karpinen. And um, yeah. So um, Antti Karpinen. Yeah. Uh, and so, but auntie is a super awesome guy and he's like won international photo competitions and he's just like, he's an amazing guy, but he's also an amazing artist. And, uh, I took his digital art, digital artist masterclass, uh, I think maybe like three years ago. And, uh, it was just like mind blowing, you know, a lot of it was very edifying cause you were just like, I don't really have anybody to compare myself to. It's like, so it's, I'm glad to know that I'm on the right track as far as some of these things go, but like, I would have never have thought to use that technique or to do this. And I'm so glad that I took this because now I know, and I've learned something that I'm going to forever use now. And so there've been a couple of times where I've gotten to do that. And it just really kind of helped me grow as a photographer. And, and also like last year around this time, uh, there's a photographer in in New York uh, named Chris Knight. And I took his um, like Rembrandt um, finding Rembrandt uh, course. And, uh, and it was, and it was just on lighting. Uh, and it, and it kind of expired, inspired me to want to do like a lighting course of my own, uh, just because it was so thorough. Um, a lot of it was just, was as far as my experience goes, was, was kind of basic information. It was stuff that I already knew, but sometimes it's really, really good to refresh yourself on the basics because, you know, in the midst of doing all of this crazy stuff, it sometimes it's good to go back over the basics. You know what I mean? It's like, cause if you lose that foundation, then it doesn't really matter right. how fancy you can get in Photoshop. It's like, if you don't have a good foundation, then it's, you know, you know. <laughs> that's amazing, Ryan. And, you know, I, I appreciate you like still working hard to make sure that you go back to the basics, you know, and, keep growing and keep learning and you're not just stuck in a like, okay, this is, this is what I do. This is my avenue. And I think that's what makes you so versatile as a photographer too. And a designer and artist and, you know, all the CGI and everything is because you're always growing and you can do so many different facets and you've got such an open mind to it, you know, you're the, the light or um, the dark side, or, you know, you're not in just one genre, which is totally fine, you know, for certain photographers and everything, but you just have such a, a wide range of things that you can do and do well. And they, they don't all look the same. They're, there's so much uniqueness to them. So congratulations on, <laughs> oh, on that. And it's been really fun getting uh, to talk to you, Ryan. Is there so anything many Michael else Scott quotes are coming you want to share with so, your It's like, don't words. ever, for any reason whatsoever, <laughs> to anyone, for any reason, <laughs> 
if you know the office, you know what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, oh man, you know, um, <laughs> parting words of wisdom. What yeah, what what could you possibly can. learn from Ryan? Like, that, you know, the proverbs don't teach you. Know, like, Hey, I mean, one thing I've learned in the whole media world is that you, you can't disc anybody. I mean, the person yeah. that gives you water on set or the craft food service person or anything like that could become the next big person that you're asking for a job down the road. So, you know, you never know. And just saying, you know, learning for Ryan is extremely <laughs> talented and who knows what's going to happen in the future. So while we while we're allowed to know you before you own your private jet, just FYI, you know, I like to be able to sit in the back seat. Um, <laughs> man, just but, yeah, well, just stay you know, humble. We have you. Are there any just stay last, humble like, and you know, treat everyone with kindness, you and you know, like, treat everyone the way you, you'd want to be treated. Um, I mean, honestly, that is just a good okay. life, you know, lesson in general. But I mean, honestly, yeah, just 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 stay humble and uh, never stop yeah. learning. Never stop learning because it doesn't really matter how good you ever get. Um, there's always going to be somebody better than you. Uh, and, and so you could always learn from them, you know, so just, yeah, always be humble. Um, never think of yourself as bigger than you are, I guess. Uh, rem remember where you come from, I guess, uh, is what I'm trying to say. And, um, and, and yeah, uh, and just, you know, find what you love to do and do it with all of your might, you know. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, Ryan, so much for being on our show. And um, for those of you, we're going to continue interviewing fantastic artists. Oh, like man, Ryan, that, that was so fun. That was so fun. Yeah, no, you know, was... He's going to have some really great things <laughs> coming up. He just posted something about Halo. I think you were working on something with that. That was amazing, by the way. Um, so if you guys haven't checked out his Instagram or all of his portfolio, <laughs> um, you have, have YouTube and all kinds of things on Linktree. So check that out because, I mean, that's pretty amazing, by the way. So I just wanted to say that. I meant to say that earlier about the halo, and I didn't. So, um, But, yes, we'll have a follow-up. And, Ryan, I'm sure we'll have you back on here so you can tell us where how your journey has progressed. And uh, we'll be able to you know, so follow him and then keep up um, with us, guys, because we're going to be housing or having more people on our show. We've got um, Hollywood and uh, Chicago prop master Ashley Flowers who's going to be coming on. She makes some of the most real-life props I've ever seen in my life. If you've seen, like, Dead Hands and Bach. Yeah, it's, it's great stuff. Um, and then we've also got um, Hollywood voiceover actor Marcel Shepard who will be coming on and uh, European animated film um, voiceover actor as well, um, Mac Griffin coming on and many, 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 many more people that will be coming on um, to the show we're going to be hosting each week. So please uh, follow along for that. Awesome. Looking and forward like to I it. Said, Ryan, thank <laughs> you so much for being on our show and we will see you uh, follow up with you soon. So thank you. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care, everybody. And um, Ryan, stay on just for a little bit longer, but we're going to see the rest of you guys um, next episode.